All right, in this video, I'm going to give a quick overview and rundown of the DJI Phantom FC40. Now, uh, I've had this for probably three or four months, and uh, I've logged a fair amount of flight time with it and, and feel like I've got a pretty firm handle on operating it. Um, this isn't an unboxing review. Uh, there's several of those on YouTube. I just figured that I'd give my, uh, my opinion of it, give a demonstration of some of the flight modes and my impressions. Um, I'm not a, I don't have a huge amount of experience in the RC aircraft field. A little bit, a little bit with fixed wing aircraft, and I've been flying quadcopters like this for a while now. So uh, I at least uh, I got a firm grasp on what I'm doing, but uh, I'm certainly nowhere near an expert. But uh, in comparison to the other DJI Phantoms, is a, a couple of things. Of course, the big thing is the camera right here. This is the uh, little camera that it comes with. It's very small and lightweight. Uh, it's a uh, films in 720p. So, um, you know, not quite as good as a GoPro, but it's much, much smaller. It's smaller and lighter than a GoPro is, and the housing it sits in is very light. So, uh, this uses the standard rib style mount that a GoPro uses. So, you can actually put a GoPro on here, and I have done that on this, but the extra weight that it adds makes, um, you know, you sacrifice a little bit of flight time uh, and, uh, and maneuverability with the extra weight of the GoPro. So, but there, you know, this camera really works fine. Uh, one of the nice things is that the FC40's got its own app. Uh, it works both on uh, iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. And uh, <clears throat> I've got an Android phone here, and I'll demonstrate that. What's nice about that is uh, you can start and stop recording from your phone, and you can also watch live video from this uh, on your on your uh, handheld device. The it's not quite as good as a real-time FPV setup, though. There is a little bit of a lag, um, and of course. It's over Wi-Fi, so you, the further away that you get with a, the copter, the slower the frame rate gets, and that really doesn't make it good for FPV flying. You know, if you get more than three or four hundred feet away, the video is pretty pretty much useless. So you can see that far. So and not really good for FPV, but uh, good for framing your shots and good for starting and stopping recording. The camera uses a, a little micro SD card. And I just have an 8 gig card in here that gives you plenty of recording time. So, Okay, so we uh, turn the power on on our FC40 camera here. I've got my uh, Galaxy S4 phone. And so this is our uh, FC40 app. We just select the FC40 Wi-Fi right here. And then as soon as it connects, we'll be able to actually see a live picture from the FC40 camera. Okay, and right there you can see there's the uh, there's the camera. Whatever direction I turn it, that's uh, that's what you're going to see. So it actually it works fairly well, you know, fairly good quality. But as you can see, there's a little bit of lag there. Uh, and like I said, it does uh, probably too much lag to make it a good FPV type camera. Over the uh, controls here on the on the remote, uh, just a quick. This is a pretty simple transmitter actually. Uh, you got your power button right here that just slides on. Uh, these two switches up here control your flight modes. So this one on the right here, this is switch one or S1. Uh, the uh, top position right here is ATTI or attitude mode. And what that does is that just uh, attempts to maintain the quadcopter in a level position. It doesn't try to maintain its position uh, by GPS. So it just keeps it level. That means that wind will affect it or momentum. It'll continue to drift. And I, honestly, I usually fly in this mode more than any other mode. And uh, I found it's really good for shooting video. You actually uh, start a drift like that, and then you drift by your subject, and then the video ends up being nice and smooth. If you're trying to control it, it, it ends up being pretty choppy and jerky. <clears throat> One position down or the center position on that switch, that's the GPS mode. And as long as you have a good GPS lock, that maintains the quadcopter in its in a fixed position based on GPS. So if you were to release the sticks and you're in this mode, uh, the quadcopter will actually stop and it'll hover in place. Uh, it won't be affected by wind. If a gust of wind hits it, it'll actually correct itself. And it does a pretty good job of staying in place. It'll, you know, it'll stay within a few foot uh, diameter circle. Now, uh, by default, the bottom mode, uh, I believe, is set for uh, also attitude mode. Um, I've changed that to manual mode, so if the switch is all the way down, uh, this is manual. And honestly, this is a 
a more advanced type of flying. If you're in manual mode, the accelerometers inside the quadcopter don't attempt to maintain a level. So when you release the sticks, it stays in whatever position that you've let go in. And uh, this is actually dangerous. That's actually a, a really easy way to crash the copter, but you can do some pretty cool stunt type flying with it, with that mode. So um, not a good mode to, uh, to fool around in. I've, uh, I don't fly in there a lot, but occasionally I'll switch it down there and practice just to make sh sure I can, uh, I can control the quadcopter in that mode. Whenever I'm doing that, uh, there's been a few times where I've just simply lost control. I've I, you know, gotten my orientation messed up. And a uh, quick fix for that, if I realize I've totally lost control and the quadcopter is going down, I'll just flip it all the way back up to attitude mode and then the, uh, the nozzle will take over and it'll end up leveling itself out and prevent a crash. And uh, so far, I haven't had a, a problem with that. So Now the switch on the left right here, um, this is uh, course lock and home lock. Uh, so when you're up, it's, uh, those are disabled. Um, center position is home lock, bottom is course lock. So when you're in home lock, uh, uh, these only work, by the way, if you have the GPS enabled. So uh, you need to be in the GPS position if you want to use the course lock or home lock. In the home lock position, what that does is, uh, regardless of which direction the quadcopter is facing, if you pull the stick down toward you, it'll come home. If you push it up, it'll go away. So it doesn't matter if you're facing left, right, north, south, east, west, whatever. You hold the stick down and it'll come back toward you. And this is really handy if you're flying right on the edge of where you can see. You can uh, uh, you know, just hold this back down and it'll come back toward you no matter what direction it's facing. Uh, I don't usually use this. And the reason is because I'm, I'm used to flying based on the quadcopter's orientation. And honestly, I think it's a little bit confusing. I, you know, if, if the GPS isn't working or you don't have a good GPS signal, you're really kind of rolling the dice that it comes home when you, when you pull the stick down. Um, so I just don't use it that often. Um, I have played with it a little bit and it does work. So um, in the bottom position here is course lock. What that does is when you fly a certain direction, you fly a course, uh, it remembers that and then that's how it orients the sticks. Um, so whatever direction you've just flown, that's, that's up. Um, you know, when you, if you want to reverse that direction, that's down and, and obviously left and right are oriented based on that course. So, and, and that maintains that orientation regardless of, of which direction the quadcopter is facing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug the battery in here and uh, let it get a GPS fix and we'll go ahead and take it for a flight. Uh, first things first, you always wanna check your switch positions on here. Definitely make sure you're not manual and turn your controller on before you plug the, uh, the quadcopter in. Um, I've got it selected to attitude mode. Uh, my sticks are centered, so go ahead and turn this on. And then we'll plug the battery in. Um, it'll make the uh, speed controls will make a, uh, a tone to let you know that they're powered up. And then our, our status indicator LED on the back will start blinking and we'll go over that uh, in just a second here. There's a whole series of LED patterns. I'm not going to go over those. Those are listed in the instruction manual. The first orange blink, that is uh, let me know I'm in attitude mode. If that's green, you're in GPS mode. The three red blinks tells me that it hasn't located the GPS yet. Um, when we see a series of green blinks, that's going to mean that the, uh, that the flight controller's warmed up. So we'll wait for that. Once you see that series of green blinks, then you're ready to fly. Okay, so right now, what that means is the, uh, the flight controller is warmed up and it's actually ready to fly. The three red blinks, uh, that tells me that it still hasn't received a GPS lock yet. When it does, the red blinks will go from three to two and then one, and then it'll, you'll get another series of green flashes, and that'll mean that it's recorded its home location and is, uh, you're ready for flight in GPS mode, and the return to home feature will work. So let's take this thing outside and give it a clear view of the sky and let it get its GPS signal and then we'll fly it. Okay, we're outside now and it's actually it's a little bit breezy today, but uh, not too windy to fly in. So uh, you can see right now all we're getting is a one orange blink on the LED. That means it's got its uh, GPS fix and we're ready to fly in GPS mode. So we'll go ahead and arm the motors. To do that, I'll take this controller right here 
Go like that. Now it's armed. Go ahead and take off. Okay, right now we're in attitude mode. And so this, the, the copter will move based on the wind. Each time we get a little gust of wind, it's actually gonna move a little bit. The flight controller will try and keep it level. But it does a pretty good job of hovering. Okay, if we put it in GPS mode, then it'll stay in place without any input from me. <clears throat> so you can see now the light has changed to a green blink. And so regardless of uh, wind or anything else, it's going to try and stay in that position right there. So you can see right here, I got no input uh, from me at all on the sticks. It's stay hovering in place. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple machine to fly.